Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. Today's quick fire Q&A is all about the knee joint. Five questions, 10 seconds to answer each one. So, question number one. Which ligament of the knee joint prevents anterior translation of the tibia in relation to the femur? 10 seconds, off you go. Okay, time's up. So the ligament in question is the anterior cruciate ligament. The biggest anatomical clue that demonstrates its function is the fact that this ligament attaches to the anterior intercondylar surface of the tibia. Remember the three anteriors. The anterior cruciate ligament prevents anterior translation of the tibia and attaches to the anterior intercondylar surface of the tibia. And just for your information, it's the exact opposite for the posterior cruciate ligament which prevents posterior translation of the tibia and attaches to the posterior intercondylar surface of the tibia. Question number two. What are the three special subjective questions for the knee joint? Time's up. So the three special subjective questions for the knee are, is there any locking? Is there any clicking? And is there any giving way? Special mention should also be given to swelling, particularly swelling which occurs immediately after an injury. This may indicate bleeding within the joint, which may suggest a significant trauma or tissue rupture. This is very different to swelling which occurs hours, days, or weeks after an injury. Another pro tip. If your patient voluntarily informs you that they hear a pop, a snap, or a tear during their mechanism of injury, the clinician should suspect an ACL tear until this injury can be ruled out. Question number three. How is Clark's test performed and what does it test for? Okay, time's up. So as you can see in this video, to perform Clark's test, the therapist places the webbing between the thumb and index finger just superior to the patella, in order for them to gently but firmly glide the patella in a cordad direction. The patient then performs a contraction of the quadriceps muscle, whilst the therapist maintains their pressure. But please bear in mind that this is quite a provocative test, so take care with your patients with irritable symptoms. This test is for patellofemoral joint dysfunction and is considered to be positive if retropatellar pain is caused or if the patient cannot hold their quadriceps contraction. However, be aware that you are looking for a reproduction of your patient's specific symptoms rather than just pain in general, as this test is often painful for asymptomatic subjects. Question number four. Fill in the blanks to generate the names of these muscles that produce movement at the knee. Time's up. So the first muscle is the vastus lateralis muscle. The second muscle is sartorius. The third muscle is biceps femoris. And the fourth muscle is popliteus. And lastly, question number five. What do you think is going on with this patient based on their x-ray? And time's up. So, the report for this x-ray demonstrates that the patient has osteoarthritis, mainly affecting the medial tibiofemoral compartment of the knee joint. The first sign that tells us this is the significant narrowing of the joint space on the medial side of the tibiofemoral joint. As secondly does the osteophytes, which we can see here and here, also on the medial side of the knee joint. As the clinician, we may use this x-ray result as a guide and see if the x-ray picture matches up with our findings during our objective examination. So that completes our quick fire Q&A. Thank you as always for listening, and for all our best tips and videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media, and keep watching Clinical Physio.